Let's look at some of my some of my painting. Now, uh, I'm not Zen, and I'm certainly not a Zen master, but it's surprising in some ways how similar uh, my my approach to the to the painting could be to them. And these are like I, I, I have three main uh, in terms of the East three main groups of sort of helpers with my art. There's the Tang and Song Dynasty you know, of, uh, of ancient China. There's the revival of that in Japan, a thousand and more years later, the Nangas. And then there are the Zenga, which are the, the Zen masters who, who uh, painted. And as I said before, the, the Zen master, when he said he reached about the age of 65, could do better teaching with, uh, not with words, not with writing, not with anything else, but his art. All right? So he becomes, becomes metaverbal, which is, in spite of all this talk, is what I'm, what I'm trying to, uh, to do. Now, there's a very strange word that is uh, ex expression that has been used for Zen painting. They call it deliberate spontaneity. That's impossible. Even in the most koanish way, that is impossible. What, what I would take it to me is you, as it were, deliberate and then you spontaneously uh, uh, paint. But the deliberation I would call meditation, which briefly or at length precedes every painting I do. I usually set it up in the first place and then bring it back again between each instance and so forth. So if you think of somebody that is thought to be very free, well Jackson Pollock of course was a great exception, but people like, like Rothko, Franz Klein, and so Franz Klein said he went to, to Japan and he, he uh, studied Zen and so forth, but look at what they do. It seems to be so free, but, it's, but it is really so deliberate. There's, there's no subject as such. There's no, you know, Pieta and so forth. But there is a subject. They have created a subject, which may just be all these lines and so forth, but they do it as a subject. Now, uh, one of the things, th these guys did very, very big painting. They used a lot of canvas. So if you start to use a lot of big canvas, that costs a lot of money, even for the... So you've got to be very careful that what you do doesn't destroy a whole big canvas. A little one, but a big, a big canvas is, you know, huge ones. You've got to think twice. In fact, you've got to think, which is the problem. Now, but spontaneity is very, very different. Uh, I, I love the SP root. Think of all these words, uh, you know, sperm, spit, spew, sparkle, sprinkle, spurt. Uh, there's so many of these words that, that, have, that, that obviously start with SP. And to me, the idea is always, think of spit. It comes out and it goes somewhere. Spark comes out, goes somewhere. Spurt goes somewhere. It all travels. It comes from some place to some place. Speech, right? And, and at the other, where, where it lands, it either uh, catches fire, gives birth, or whatever, you know, or whatever. But it, it has this sense of travel and sudden. Poof, it's just out, boom, it's a spark, boom, and it's done. But it's, it's very free, but it always has this potential to create life where it lands. It's coming in a way from life to life, but very suddenly. That's what I think spontaneous. There's a sense of liveliness, of spark in, in, the, in the very word spontaneous, which is a very opposite to deliberate. So, but and I think this is, the, so, so many of the Zen, Zenga, the Zen painter, that they did, the, the, uh, they did Buddhas over and over, you know, uh, over and over, the room and so forth, over and over, and all stylized and stylized. You must have seen what, how many ones where, where 
where he has his eyes like these incredibly sampaku eyes. Do you know why that is? Because he wanted to make sure this was the sixth patriarch, that he would never go to sleep while meditating. So he had his lower eyelids cut off. That's a little extreme. Right? And, and so if you paint him, and they do, they paint him and they paint him and paint him, you know, and draw him and draw him. But it's all, to me, that's, that's deliberate. That's not spontaneous. Right? But someone like Pollock is spontaneous. So I like to think that, that I am Zen-like in the sense that it is spontaneous, as, as with uh, Pollock, at, at this, and, and not, but it's a meditation, it's the pre-deliberation, it's a pre-painting deliberation, not the deliberate. and I don't know what it is I'm deliberating except just the intention to, to do as best I can healing work, but I'm not deliberating on, on I'm going to do uh, this subject or that subject, no, nothing, nothing, nothing to do with that. You know, of course, with Pollock, he was absolutely free, it seems. But yet, when they do what they call fractal analysis, they find that there was an intelligence behind the whole thing. Well, of course there was. It's a question of, in a sense, whose intelligence? But, but there, was a, there was a freedom, I and mean, he danced. The same, with, with, as, as I find myself sort of dancing with some big works I do, but with the small ones, it's always my hand which is dancing. If you look at Rothko, you know, there's no dance. And, and, and if you dab, 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 you're not dancing. How many dabs in, in, a, in, a, in a portrait? There may be 10,000. I mean, that dab, 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 dab. There could be, the, dabs are not spontaneous. You know, flow is spontaneous, uh, but, 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 not, but not dabs.